Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Eric Maury with David Adams Comics, and do I have a story for you? Now, in the 1950s, there was a rise of something called the Comic Book Code. Many of you probably notice this if you go online and look something up and you see the words pre-code attached to a listing. I'm going to explain to you what that means. Now, if you already know about the code, stick around and check this out anyway. But if you don't, I hope you find this as compelling as I do. Now, our story starts with this book right here, The Seduction of the Innocents, written by a guy named Frederick Wertham in the early 1950s. Now, Wertham, when he came out with this book, was looking for a correlation between juvenile delinquency and juvenile delinquents. And the one thing, the one thread between all of that was comic books, or so it seemed. All kids had them, they loved them, they were cheap, very collectible, and Wertham realized there must be something in these comic books that made these kids lash out and act the way they did. This book, which was a runaway success for the time, prompted a national interest in comic books and also got the Senate, the United States Senate, involved in the future of the comic book industry. Now, at the time, the United States government had just started broadcasting Senate subcommittee hearings on television. And the second televised Senate subcommittee hearing of all time was about comic books. The gentleman leading the hearing picked up this comic in the air and asked Bill Gaines directly, Sir, do you think this comic is in good taste? To which Bill Gaines replied, Yeah, for a horror comic I do. But even that did not save comic books. Shortly after, the code was firmly enacted, which enabled a board of censors to say what could and couldn't be put out to the general public. EC's comic lines unfortunately folded not long after that. They still exist today. They print Mad Magazine, which I'm sure most of you have at least heard of. But this did lead to the downfall of not just their company, but horror, crime, romance, comics in general. Now, it's safe to assume this comic is worth money because of the cover, and you're not wrong. But one of the real reasons these books are so valuable today is because they just don't exist. After the Senate subcommittee hearing, which led to the censorship, which led to the eradication of this company and many companies just like it, people took these books out and they burned them at rectories. They recycled them, there were paper drives. What I'm trying to tell you is these books just don't exist anymore. And that is why they're so collectible. That is why I love them. And that is why I thought this was the perfect thing to talk to all of you about today. This comic is now for sale on our website. I'm going to hate to see this thing go, but I will take some solace in knowing that it went to a fan and fellow collector of the genre. Do you have a comic book that you want to know more about? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, I'm Eric Mowry at David Adams Card World. Thank you for stopping by and we'll see you next time.